Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Gardner, and today I'm just going to show you a really cool and fun, interesting finding. Uh, this uh, is a beautiful multinucleated, vacuolated melanocyte. I know it looks like a Teuton giant cell like you'd see in a juvenile xanthogranuloma, but actually it's a melanocyte. Now, how do I know? Well, I've seen them a lot of times in nevi before, and also this is a nevus. This was from a congenital pattern nevus uh, in a young adult, if I recall. And look right next to it, you see melanocytes with gray cytoplasm and melanin pigment production. This is just one of those cells. And if you did an immunostain for MART1 or SOX10 or S100, it'd be positive. So I like these because they're kind of cool and pretty. They look, uh, uh, this one looks almost like uh, a Teuton giant cell, like I said. Um, and if you want to see what a, a real Teuton giant cell looks like, I'll put a link to a video about JXG down in the video description. You can check that out. But why I really like this case is look at this beautiful, bright, orangey, pink inclusion body in the cytoplasm. So I saw this case a long time ago when I was early in, in practice, and I just thought it was so cool. And I like finding interesting, strange little oddities when I'm looking at slides. It keeps me entertained. Um, but I thought this looked like a little sun. It's got a bright blazing center and little uh, radiating uh, spikes or, you know, sunbeams around the outside. And so I took a picture of it and I shared it on, on Twitter a long time ago. And I said, I don't know what it is, but it's a, a really beautiful little uh, uh, sun-shaped inclusion in a uh, multi, uh, multinucleate evacuated melanocyte. And my friend, uh, Sylvia Godesman, she said, oh, that's a Gottlieb body. And sure enough, this had been described uh, way before I was even <clears throat> was even a pathologist by Dr. Jeffrey Gottlieb, uh, who uh, who uh, pointed these out back in 2002 and published about this. So these are found oftentimes. Uh, these little inclusions are in the vacuolated sebacite-like, or in this case, Teuton-like melanocytes. Uh, that are multinucleated and vacuolated, and these are usually found in long-standing benign nevi, often congenital pattern nevi. So um, I had never seen one before, but uh, now that I know about them, if I look for them, I find them actually pretty often. Not usually quite as beautiful as this, but I'm going to show you some more examples. So it's it's pretty and cool. It's it's path art, as I like to call it. It's just an artistic, fun, beautiful thing to look at and admire and share pictures of. But it's also diagnostically helpful because when you find these kinds of vacuolated melanocytes and these inclusions, usually that's seen in benign nevi. Okay, now you could, of course, have a melanoma arising in a benign nevus, but it tells you at least part of this lesion is probably benign, has probably been there for a long time. And the, the thought is that melanocytes, when they become multinucleated like this, and when they develop uh, this vacuolated cytoplasm, and when they develop these Gottlieb bodies, all of those things are probably senescent or degenerative change associated with, with long-standing lesions. All right, so I, I have to say I do look for these a lot now. I, I cannot recall ever having seen one of these uh, uh, Gottlieb bodies in a melanoma. I've only seen them personally that I can recall in nevi that are benign, okay? And uh, the same thing is actually true, I think, of these vacuolated cells. I've seen like frothy balloon cell change in both nevi and melanomas, but I can't recall ever seeing like a really good well, I take that back. I've seen a few sebacite-like vacuolated cells in melanoma, but they, they look different than this. Like cells like this, I, I can't recall having seen a good example in melanoma. So it's kind of helpful when you find these things, they're benign. And also, if you're a beginner starting out, you'll see a cell like this and think, what the heck is that? Is it a Teuton giant cell? Is it a sebacite? So it's good to know what it is. I like to know what all the little findings on a slide are so that when I encounter them, I understand what it is and I'm not confused by it. So here's just a closer view of the same that same cell, and you can see this bright pink center. I'll put some additional references in the video description uh, from Dr. Gottlieb's original paper and some other studies uh, since that have looked at these, and one of which did electron microscopy and found that these actually have like an electron-dense core with little filaments coming out from them. Uh, they're not membrane-bound, so they're thought to not actually be degenerative melanosomes, which was a, the initial idea behind it. Um, and we're not really sure what they are, but they, they do stain positive for ubiquitin. So uh, the, the paper by Wan Wun Sha and colleagues, they theorized that maybe this is something to do with some uh, uh, ubiquitinated proteins that are not getting broken down appropriately. Some, some, uh, some uh, problem or abnormality in the ubiquitin mediated degeneration process that leads to these accumulations of protein. Whatever they are, they're pretty and I like them. So let's look at some more. Here are uh, multiple multinucleotides 
nucleated melanocytes, which have all sorts of cytoplasmic vacuoles. Again, they look kind of sebocyte like uh, they look like multinucleated histiocyte giant cells, but they're not. They're all melanocytes, all of these here. And this one has one, two, three, four Gottlieb bodies. They don't have as much of that nice spokes around the outside, but they have the beautiful uh, bright pink orange cores. Very pretty. Uh, look at that. If you don't like that, I can't make you happy. And also notice that uh, melanocyte nuclei often have uh, cytoplasmic pseudo inclusions in their nuclei. So see the texture and color of this little bubble here in the middle of the nucleus is the same as the cytoplasm. So the concept or idea is that the nucleus, kind of like if you take your fist and push it into a balloon, you know, it like invaginates into the middle of the balloon. The same idea here is that the cytoplasm is pushing into or bulging into the nucleus. And then when we section it microscopically, you can see that little island that looks like stranded cytoplasm, but probably connects back out to the outside. At least that's my, my conceptual understanding of it. And this is common in melanocytes, particularly in nevi, but you can see melanomas with pseudo-inclusion also. So just so you know, that little nuclear vacuolation that has not is not clear, but has cytoplasmic uh, texture and color in it, that's a common finding in melanocytes. Here's another one. Look how multivacuolated that thing looks just like a sebocyte. Or honestly, if you put that in the middle of an ugly soft tissue tumor, that looks for all the world like a lipoblast, doesn't it? So uh, they are vacuoles, uh, but the, the type of cell they're in being a melanocyte tells you that it's not a vacuolated histiocyte, it's not a sebocyte, and it's not a lipoblast. And again, here in this other cell here, we have another kind of uh, not well-formed Gottlieb body and another one right there. Here's some closer views and look at this one. This has got the frilly uh, look here. Oh, I couldn't see it down here because I had my microphone in the way. Uh, there, look at that one with all those radiating spokes. I just think they look so cool. I could look at these all day. In fact, I've got like all the pictures here are all ones that I'd saved in my files over the years, just because every time I see them, I like to point them out to my trainees. I don't mention these in my report. I don't think, <clears throat> again, it, it's not a important thing to tell me something except that, oh, this is a long-standing benign nevus probably. But again, I already knew that when I looked at these lesions. I'm not showing you the low power, but these lesions all had low power features that were clearly uh, benign melanocytic nevus, okay? Just a closer view of that beautiful structure. Here's another one, again, in a congenital pattern, benign nevus. Closer look, you can see that beautiful core and the vacuolation in the cytoplasm. Another tiny one. And look, this is uh, extra evidence for melanocytes here. You have a uh, nice fine melanin pigment in the, the, the uh, lesional cell there. And here's a low power view of a, of a big, plump uh, congenital pattern nevi. Uh, some of these we call congenital pattern, but are, are maybe not actually congenital. That's why we say congenital pattern with congenital features, because I don't really know if they were there since the, the person was born, you know. Uh, but here, this one is big and polypoid. It has fat cells in it. Um, that's really common in benign nevi, particularly these deep kind of congenital pattern ones. If you want to see examples of benign nevus, I have a, a, a benign nevus 101 video. I'll put the link for that down in the video description too. So you have a whole day of watching, okay? Okay. Look, you can see the multinucleated cells from low power. They almost look like pleomorphism, but when you go closer, they're actually multinucleated. So don't be tricked by that. And when we go closer here too, you can see all these pink areas here. So these are another kind of fun structure, not necessarily related to Gottlieb bodies and vacuolated melanocytes, but I often do see these in the same types of nevi where I find the Gottlieb bodies and the sebocyte-like vacuolated melanocytes, okay? And these pink round structures that have kind of layered or lamellated or swirled uh, appearance in the middle, these are called by a couple of different names. I like to call them Wagner-Meissner bodies because they look identical to the Wagner-Meissner bodies that we see in diffuse neurofibromas. And nevi that have these and also have neurofibroma-like areas, we can call neurotized nevi. Again, it's a really common uh, feature in benign nevi, particularly these larger congenital pattern uh, nevi. And these, these are called Wagner-Meissner bodies because they look very much like the Meissner's corpuscles or tactile corpuscles that you see in the papillary dermis on the uh, pads of the fingers and the toes and sometimes in other sites as well. So I think these are really cool. They can also be called tactoid bodies, or uh, some people in it, when they're seen in Nevi refer to them as Masson bodies, uh, but Masson already has his name on a lot of things, so I'm going to call them Wagner-Meister bodies because they look just like the ones that you can see um, in diffuse type neurofibromas. And in fact, I, I find Nevi all the time that if I take a, a high power picture of it, I could show it to anybody and convince them it's a neurofibroma, and it's only once you look at the whole lesion and see other areas that clearly are are nevus with round melanocytes in nests that you know you're dealing with the nevus, okay? 
And here's another view of them with the condenser flipped off. You can see that textural difference. I've been talking about that in a few videos recently. Flip the condenser on and it's brighter and smoother. Flip it off and it gives you um, more, I'm sorry, this one uh, is the condenser on. So it gives a more smooth, flat appearance. And with the condenser uh, flipped off, it gives you that more refractile, three-dimensional appearance. It makes the little lines or kind of stacked, layered appearance uh, stand out. All right. If you like, these are like little swirls of cotton candy on a stick, or they kind of remind me of little striped pink and white Easter eggs, whatever works for you. All right. And closer look at those. They're quite pretty. And look what we have in addition to the Wagner Meissner bodies, multi or multi nucleated melanocytes and a multi vacuolated one. We can't see its nuclei here, probably because they're outside the plane of section with two Gottlieb bodies and another one in the same lesion. So again, all of these are just fun, cool findings to keep you entertained if you're having a, a board day uh, or if you have a trainee with you and you wanna show them something kind of fun or even better yet to bring up and talk to your friends about it, your next cocktail party. And maybe this explains why I uh, don't have much of a social life. All right, I hope you have a great day. Happy Friday, enjoy your weekend. Thanks for watching.